Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the White Bull MMA Podcast, and it's an absolute pleasure to have on the show today, UFC featherweight Ramona Pasquale, uh, the first female Hong Kong fighter to be fighting in the UFC. So how are you doing today, Ramona? I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, so Ramona, like, you know, like, like I said off camera, I've been wanting to talk to you ever since I saw that TED Talk. So if anything, you know, just to kind of get the interview started, uh, can you talk about, like, you know, your, your start in MMA? Because, you know what I mean? Like, uh, most people, they... They uh, they get into martial arts either you know through family or they just stumble upon it. So what was your what was your start in your journey? Yeah, um, definitely not through my family, <laughs> <laughs> and it was more from my my love of uh, sports growing up. Mm. Um, I played basketball and rugby in high school, and then eventually started playing for uh, the national Hong Kong team as well. Mm. So always been competitive, but was always like shy, reserved person. Um, and I think that was kind of what attracted me to martial arts, the whole uh, developing confidence and, you know, being able to meet adversity and not shy away from it. Mm. And uh, so I graduated college and well, I started martial arts when I was like 16 mm. and it's just for fun, you know, one of those like cardio kickboxing type of things. And I was just to stay fit and like to help with my other sports. So I wasn't really going to take, I had no plans to take it seriously. Um, and then all throughout college, I continued training and I ended up training at this one place in LA that had a few pro fighters and just seeing the way that they were just really inspired me to give it a try mm-hmm. um, because they really stood against the stereotype of fighters are, you know, scary and violent and, you know, um, unstable. And really yeah. it's like, the opposite you know they have so much stability be- through the fighting through the martial arts that they're able to then excel in other parts of their lives you know in their relationships families at home or at work mm-hmm. um and so after graduating i took a year off to you know give muay thai a try and that was all i was training at the time muay thai and jiu-jitsu didn't come until later mm-hmm. and um, i did that for a year and i just loved it i was like wow like i love competing just the rush of it all the adrenaline And then I ended up, you know, being like, all right, now it's time to get a real job because I had a business degree and I have to, you know, do something with it. Yeah. And so I did that for like five years um, and just kind of going down the path that was expected, you know, everyone else was, you know, whether you're in finance or consulting or, you know, real estate, like it was just, you know, a bunch of different corporate jobs. Mm -hmm. And I kind of tried my hand at like different things and I just, um, it was nice to kind of gain that organizational experience of what it would be like to be in that kind of setting and the kind of people that you deal with and kind of problem solving. Mm -hmm. But I always had this itch that I just like needed to scratch. And that was, you know, wanting to pursue fighting properly as a job. Yeah. At the time, you know, I was like training jujitsu and getting really into it. Um, The UFC just added the women, you know, I think that Mm -hmm. was like 2013 or something like that. Yeah. And it was just so inspiring to like watch them fight. And then I was kind of like, like that seems really cool, but I can never do that because like, you know, people are gonna judge me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then eventually I was 27 and I was like, well, you know, now like either you do it or you don't, either you do it now or it's gonna be too late. And so I just decided, okay, well, let's, if I give it a year, like, you know, even if it's a waste, I would have wasted just a year and that'd be mm-hmm. fine. And so, you know, that was like, what, six years ago, and I'm still at it. And I've just kind of overcome so much to get to where I am. And I think the motivation for doing this continues to change as I achieve, you know, different goals that I set out for myself. Yeah. Um, And then the goals just obviously keep getting bigger and bigger. So, yeah, it's been a pretty wild ride. And I'm, uh, you know, grateful for it. Yeah, definitely. And then, you know, do you remember that, like that one point, like, you know, said like at 27 that you're like, you know, let's make a good run to this, like make a good run at this career. Cause like in in the Ted talk, you started talking about like, you know, one training session you had with a teammate that she asked you to, to, to help her prepare for a fight, but you said, you know, you couldn't and uh, you had to go back to work. So was that the turning point that you're like, ah, man, let's, let's, let's give this a shot. Yeah, I think a lot of things are pointing towards that direction. Mm-hmm. Uh, but being in Hong Kong, you don't have a lot of support for MMA. The gyms are like really small. 
like the teams are really small. Um, they're kind of like spread out all over. So there isn't so much opportunity to train or compete in MMA over there. Um, and so it wasn't really something that like, no one was really fighting MMA and training MMA as like their only thing. Like they were always like teaching or like personal trainers or doing something else. Um, and yeah, that one incident was like, you know, me going to the US and like being in like a gym where, you know, they had a bunch of UFC fighters and kind of experiencing that lifestyle for a short period of time and being like, like, this is freaking awesome. I'm like, yeah. I'm like happy. Like, I don't, you don't realize it's not that I was unhappy, but you don't realize how happy you can be doing what you love until you like, you actually live it mm. even for a short while. And then you're like, wow, like I'm kind of almost like a different kind of person, but like the way I carry myself, the way I speak, the way I think, the way I feel. And I think that's what attracted me to it the most. It's like, I like the kind of person that I am when I'm doing this, when I'm pursuing this. Um, I'm not like agitated and like short tempered and like, you know, mm. kind of prioritizing the wrong things, which I feel like I was doing a lot of, um, you know, when I was like working a job that was not in line with my, you know, interests. Um, and so that was just, it, it was always a thought in my head that I kind of just, you know, kind of put in the back and be like, no, 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 you know, don't, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. And then enough time passes where you just realize like I was wasting time here. And I just, I, everyone, you, you don't want, you just want to know, right? Like if you have something that you really want to do, you don't know if you're going to be any good at it. You don't know if you actually want to do it, mm -hmm. but there's this desire to do it. Like you have to just know and not be like, you know, years on the line and be like, well, it's too late now. Yeah, and I'll never yeah. know. But I feel like, feel like I would have liked it or I feel like I would have been good at it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it was just the wanting to know was the biggest thing that just was like, all right, that's it. I'm quitting my job. I'm just going to do this and then see where it goes. I didn't know where it was going to go. Like I, I was like, well, maybe I'll do it for a year and I hate it or I'll mm -hmm. be like terrible at it, but I needed to give myself at least that shot to try. Yeah. And then do you still remember those first fight feels though? Like that, like their first professional fight that you're like, holy crap, we're in it. Here yeah. we are. I mean, the first time I fought Muay Thai, like my first fight was in Thailand. I literally yeah. didn't remember any of it. Like, I don't remember any uh -huh. of it, you know, there's so much going on. Um, yeah. And I feel like when you're in the beginning of your career, a lot of fights are going to be like that where you just like totally black out. Mm -hmm. But then as like you get more experience, I think you, you, you're more in the moment. You're more like aware of what's going on. You're more calculated. Um, but yeah, you, you never forget those. I mean, I remember all of my fights, right? And how I felt before, how I felt like during, how I felt after. And then I can kind of look back and reflect and kind of, you know, analyze them and see what I did well, what I didn't do well. Mm -hmm. And how do the people around you react to, you know, seeing you in those fights too? Like, let's say like, you know, your, your past job, right? And then they see you just, you know, hop into a cage and, and just, you know, go banana. So like, you know, did they say anything? They're like, man, I, we, we didn't know you had this side to you or was it yeah. like, uh-huh well I was always it was always like a hobby of mine yeah. you know that I, that I took very seriously so it'd be like you know I'd be in the gym like before work and I'd be in the gym sometimes after work mm. so I think it's almost like they, they're not so surprised you know mm. for them I was kind of like that's all you did like you like left at lunch <laughs> to go do jujitsu you know like yeah. instead of eating, eating food or like eating you have lunch at your desk so I, I think I think people like kind of like, you know, we're not the people that really know me are not surprised at all. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's kind of cool to like be like, I came from that kind of world. And then now I'm like in this world. Yeah. And, you know, I do have to ask because I keep bringing it up. How did that tech talk on opportunity come up to, uh, you know, to you? Right. Because, you know, I mean, like talking yeah. in front of a, talking in front of like, I don't know how many people were there, but I would have been, I mean, for the sorry for the language, but I, I would have been shit in bricks because like, yeah. That seemed like a lot of people. So for you, how, how did the opportunity come up? Yeah, I, so public speaking has always been like my biggest fear. Like mm -hmm. just, I'd rather get punched in the face than like go up in front of a crowd, right? And speak yeah. and talk about my ideas and like share, you know, be vulnerable and open up. Mm -hmm. And I think it was because of that, that I was like, I should do it. Like when I signed up to do it, you know, there's a whole application process. And I had a friend that kind of, um, 
I think she like referred me. You, you have to get someone who's done the TED talk before to like uh, nominate you or something. And then mm. they kind of then get your application. They figure out like who they want to include. And, um, you know, I'd already been doing this fighting thing and I was like, well, I'm just going to use kind of the same um, approach that I use towards fighting of like, I don't know if I'm going to be any good at this, but I want to be good at it. And I feel like I'll take the necessary steps to get there if I can just give myself the chance and I have the opportunity to do it. Mm-hmm. And, and that was the same approach I took. So, so I signed up to do it. It was like 2018 or something, not ready. Like being like, I'm so fucking shit scared of like, you know, going <laughs> in front of a crowd. Yeah. But, but if I sign up for it and I know there's a date, I know that I'm going to push myself to prepare because I'm not going to want to be embarrassed, you know, and like make a fool of myself. And it's kind of like a fight, right? When you mm. have like a date set for a fight, it's almost like something in your mind switches where yeah. it's like, all right, now it's like, you know, you're just extra motivated, right. To do the things that are necessary that you wouldn't be able to do if like, you know, you didn't have like that date on the calendar. Yeah. And so we scheduled that and um, yeah, started talking to people and sort of started to learn like, Oh, how do I craft, you know, what I'm trying to say or, what can I, what experience can I draw from? And coincidentally, or yeah, ironically, I don't know. I happened to uh, blow out my knee and get injured. Oh, and it was yeah. just like this big freaking disaster, like career disaster. Mm. Cause at that point I didn't know, like I was at a t- hospital in Thailand and did an MRI and the MRI came back and said like, my knee was fu- like, wrecked like done oh, i was like oh my god and they're like yeah you know like from while it looked it was like yeah like you know you're probably gonna be able to walk again and stuff but like competing at like this high level like well we don't know mm-hmm. so that was heartbreaking and i'm like well that sucks like this is all i want to do and i'm potentially not gonna be able to do it because of this yeah and that happened like i don't know a couple months before the talk and so this idea i had ideas of like what i was going to talk about and obviously then this happened and i was like well i'm going to talk about this and so mm-hmm. it ended up being like a really strong talking point and you know what i crafted the whole thing around um dealing with adver- adversity and dealing with fear so it kind of worked out that like me getting injured helped create a really good story line for my talk Mm. and then you know and then that kind of you know is something that I'll always have have um to to draw from yeah definitely and then you know from that talk and you talk about how fear kind of you know kind of you kind of have to use that as a driving force to you know for you to keep on going and you know try to use it to you know achieve your goals you made the move up to Vegas you know from Hong Kong to to Vegas so like you know how was how was that? You know, how'd you land to the syndicate MMA? Because uh, what was it over the summer? I, I had the pleasure. I was just around Vegas and I dropped into a jujitsu class and I saw you guys, you know, right after in the pro class and you guys were going at it. You guys were, you know, it was just pure hard work. But the one thing that seemed really cool about that gym is there's like a really cool family atmosphere just from, you know, seeing you guys train. So, you know, what brought you to, to the syndicate, especially? And, you know, that, you know, that, that like message you had in that video about fear was that, you know, the driving force for you to make that move to, to, to go to syndicate yeah so i was in i was based out of shanghai mm. um for a good part of like the last couple of years really and uh it was just with covid and everything there are too many travel restrictions for people to you know try you know get anywhere for fights or even find opponents and already you know i fu- i fought a bunch of featherweight like this this past like 12 months mm. But um, that's like unheard of for like the female division in Asia. So really I was fighting at bantamweight. And even then, like there's so few bantamweights in Asia. Like you get a lot of atom weights, a lot of, um, a lot of straw weights, like a few flyweights, but like, you know, you didn't have anyone bigger than that. So for me, it was just, uh, if I wanted to continue fighting, like I'd have to move over. Like mm-hmm. it was just going to have to happen. Um, and uh Vegas was the right spot because I came from the PI in Shanghai. And so, you know, they were like, you'll have, re- you know, you'll be able to use the facilities of the PI there. So then it kind of was a no brainer, like it's definitely Vegas. And then I had mm-hmm. to choose between, you know, the two gyms that were here. Um, and yeah, I just tried them both out and then just, you know, picked the one that was um, a better fit. And yeah, the, the process of moving out to Vegas is definitely, it was like, well, 
if I want this to work, I'm going to have to do this and mm -hmm. just move my life over there and not know what was going to happen. And just, I like, kind of hope for the best, but I've done that enough times now in my career where I've mm -hmm. moved, like I moved to, went to Korea and then I went to Phuket and then I went to Shanghai and then, you know, it's just always been like, I just been, you know, like a gypsy just going from like city to city, right. Looking yeah. for like the, the best environment for me to be successful. And, um, yeah, this is kind of just another step, I, I guess, in that process. Yeah. And, you know, how's that training been though? Like, how do you feel like your, your game has evolved, you know, training with, you know, with the likes of Joanne Wood and, you know, a bunch of the, the other killers that train at Syndicate? Do you, how do you feel your game's evolved from, you know, since making your move? Yeah, definitely evolved a lot because you, like there are a bunch of UFC fighters in that gym, mm. right? And so you kind of get to meet them, you get to know them and, um, you know, they're also down to earth, like, even though, even at the highest level and you get to see their process and how they deal with things. And it's like, even though it's at the highest level, the nerves are the same, you know, mm. like you deal with everything the same. It's just, as you get through certain fights, like your capacity to address obstacles and adversity kind of grows. And then you mm. have like, you know, an even bigger kind of challenge in front of you. Um, and it's just very inspiring to see these people and what they do and how they manage themselves and then learning a lot from them. So it's been um, huge for sure. Yeah. And, you know, just to bring it to, you know, to the present, right. You know I mean? You, you took that fight on one five, uh, one week's notice, which is you know completely badass. So like, you know, tell us about how that came about because, you know, the fight itself was fighting the night you, you guys were, were going at it, but you know, for you to take it on one week's notice, like I said, completely badass. So how, how did it get presented to you and, uh, and, and come across, you know, your table? Well, that's the um, benefit of being in Vegas and being yeah. so close to the UFC headquarters. You know, they're, they have so many shows at the Apex, I mean, since COVID. Mm. So the likelihood of you getting an opportunity is just higher here because you're local, because fights fall through, because people get injured, travel arrangements fall through. So it just increases your chances, you know, being here and being available and being ready. And um, we were always expecting that they were going to, you know, at some point, you know, make the call because there are only so many female fighters right out mm -hmm. here and in these certain divisions. And uh, yeah, I have to definitely um, credit my manager, you know, who has a really great relationship with um, the matchmakers and, he's always kind of there and being like, all right, I got these fighters, like they're ready, they're available. And um, yeah, we got the call and, you know, I just fought um, in mid January uh, for Invicta. And so I was kind of thinking like, oh, I'll have a little bit of time. And I was actually planning on hoping to fight again in like mid March. Mm -hmm. So I went on holiday and then I was like, first holiday in like a couple of years, right? Being like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, let's just chill, do absolutely nothing, eat a bunch of food. And then yeah. I come back and, you know, I'm kind of getting into training again. And like, you know, it wasn't like coming off the couch, but I was like, definitely like, you know, gearing back into training. And then suddenly this opportunity came and I was, you know, I wasn't gonna pass it up. So I was like, yeah. all right, let's just do what we can. So obviously circumstances could have been better to like make a debut, but this is, you know, you don't pick and choose the opportunity or the time that it comes, right? Yeah. You just take it, you get your foot in the door and you just do your best. So cut a bunch of weight, you know, go against like this girl who like we didn't really get time to game plan for we had like i don't know we met that monday of fight week being like all right i think we're gonna do this yeah. and um but uh yeah it was a great experience you know i mean i would love to fight her again i would but that's just not how the ufc works i'm just i'm gonna have to like work my way up there mm -hmm. hopefully we meet again in the future that would be really nice um but if not like i'm just really looking forward to that next opportunity you know get a full camp um, the next one's going to be at 35 because that's the division they're trying to build. So, yeah, I'm excited to to do that. Yeah, you know, sounds good. And, you know, you kind of, you know, touched upon it a little bit there at the at the very end. Of, I was just about to ask you if, if you're going to stay at 145, but it seems like you'd go to 135. So, you know, one last question before, you know, we go. And, you know, once again, thank you for your time. And, you know, your story is like super, super cool, super inspiring. So the fact that I get to talk to you is freaking awesome. So, uh yeah you know one last question you know but 
you know, goals for 2022, like, you know, how many, how many fights do you want to get in before uh, the year ends? And, uh, and yeah. I want to get two more fights in before yeah. the year ends. And I want to, you know, this is my year. Like I knew when I moved over last year that it was entirely possible that I was going to get signed this year. Mm. I didn't think it was going to be, you know, as soon as it was, but that's even better. Like I'm not mad about it at all. I freaking, I'm so grateful for the yeah. position that I'm in to, you know, know that I've achieved that one goal. And now I'm like looking forward to the next one as well. Um, and the, you know, the potential is just endless. Like I know the kind of fighter that I am and I know what I bring to the sport and what I can bring to the division. And, you know, if I can make sure that everything aligns, you know, during fight camp and I get a good camp and I can ensure that I'm at my best, um, I know that I can put on some awesome performances that people are going to really appreciate. So I just am really looking forward to the opportunity to get to showcase my skills and express myself and um, for people to see, yeah, how the, the kind of show that I can really put on. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm sure everyone watching is looking forward to it. So, you know, before you go, do, do you want to plug in all your social media so, you know, everyone watching can, uh, can go and follow you? Sure. Yeah. Instagram at Ramona Carla. And that's pretty much the main one that I'm on. Sounds good. Sounds good. So once again, Ramona, thank you so much for the time. You know, hopefully we get, you know, we get to do this again and yeah, to, to everyone watching peace.